welcome back to my kitchen for another what's for dinner video now if you haven't watched these before these videos basically just I share with you and Mark also shares with you what we made for dinner this week we do four dinners in a video and this week as it has been for the entirety of 2020 so far I, I think it must be because I have been veggie all this time everything is vegetarian which is crazy because now we're into mid-February. How has this happened? I don't know. I literally have not eaten meat since like December the 25th or something. Crazy. Um, again, just an update on that. Really enjoying it. It's just been really, I keep saying it's been really interesting. It can't be interesting forever, but it has been just enlightening that you can make so much with just things that you grow. Like what my granddad used to grow in his garden. You can just put that all together and you can make food. You don't need to have chicken and pork and lamb or anything in your food. You can make delicious food with spices and vegetables and all the other bits that go with it as well. So that's what this video is going to show you. Four meals like that. All of them, as always, are gluten free. They're also all low FODMAP, but I'll just say this, remember your portion sizes because I'll make a big batch and then we'll portion it out so that it is low FODMAP. But if you ate the whole lot in one go, which I wouldn't imagine you would, but if you did, then it might not be so good for that. Um, so yeah, all of these can be made in 30 minutes, which I'm sort of going along the, the Jamie Oliver route here where he has all those 30 minute meal books and TV series. This is my version. Um, and yeah, everything sweet was really, really delicious. There is one thing that I'd never heard of before that is Mark's contribution, although he did contribute quite a lot, but his biggest contribution was something called a railway curry. Um, I, I don't know the meaning, the name, what, I don't know what it is, maybe they eat it on the railway, I don't know, um, but it was really really good, so check that out later in the video because you probably don't know what it is, well you might, let me know in the comments if you do, um, but yeah, I'll just let you get on with checking out all our veggie meals that we had this week. Okay, so first up this week is my halloumi and veggie chilli, which is something that I kind of, the halloumi was a last minute addition, it was just going to be a veggie chilli, but then we had halloumi and I was like, yes, let's do that and it just made that dish. Yes, you loved it. So it's very simple. Um, the veggie chili was just literally um, me chopping up some aubergine and some courgette. So I chopped it quite finely, just because I thought with the whole sort of a chili easily being minced, I wanted it to be quite a fine chop of the veg. Um, and also it makes it easier to cook for us. Like we need to have our veg really well cooked. Yes, definitely. So I chopped up my aubergine and put that in. Um, and then I put my courgette in slightly after there was no reason for that, they should go in at the same time, but I didn't have space. <laughs> so yeah, the aubergine goes in and then that just sort of sat and fried and then I added my courgette. And I, I did cook that for quite a long time. As I said, we like to have ours really well cooked. Um, it looked like quite a lot there, but it reduced massively. Um, so I might even, I was thinking this when we were doing it, I might like to put some beans or something in next time as yeah, well. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, but then I make my chilli paste by using some chilli paste, what? Yeah, my, my chilli paste, by using chilli paste, um, oregano, asafoetida and cumin, um, mix it all around and I added a bit of tomato puree as well. So then once these have cooked down quite a bit, I just added a tin of chopped tomatoes and then I add in my chilli paste, which I just sort of blob it in and then it sort of breaks down and mixes in. Um, and this is what I was saying about portion sizes and stuff. Tomato is a, a tin of tomato is too much you can only have a you less only than have a quarter. Less than a quarter. Also, I had some stock. This is low FODMAP stock. It's uh, the brand Mazel 7. Yeah, that's the one. Um, and I pour that in and let that all reduce. But just like with everything in this dish, you can't have unlimited courgette. You can't have unlimited aubergine. Um, so you just need to make sure that you know your portion sizes and what your body is comfortable with. But low FODMAP doesn't mean complete restrict and that you can't have stuff. It just means that you have to make sure you have just the right amount for you. Yes. Um, oh, so I saw you added some boiling water. Yeah, there. I added some water because I left this on for quite a while because I did it quite early um, and then I didn't want it to reduce too much and then it'd be too strong. Yes. Um, so Ooh. these are some of my smashed potatoes. They're a bit broken because they were frozen. I made loads recently and then I wanted to have them so I put them in the oven uh, from frozen just like you would chips. Um, and then whilst that was happening I made some, well, I chopped up some halloumi and fried it in my new griddle pan. Yeah, giving it a first test run. Yeah, and it worked really well. I love how you get the lines on it. It just makes it look really good. Um, and yeah, I'm obsessed with halloumi. I went out for... I've had two meals out this week for lunch, and I had halloumi both of them, and then halloumi again. And then halloumi again. So I'm halloumi, Matt. I'm turning into a halloumi. 
So yeah, we put the Krispies mashed potatoes on the plate. They look a bit overly crisp, but they were delicious. Um, it was just really nice to be able to get them out of the freezer. It was so easy. Then I added some of my veggie chili. Yeah. Which was really, really nice. Nice level of sauce. And we to were it. just going to have it like that. Yeah. That was all we were going to have. But and then, then that was just. That the was a best. bit of a surprise for you, wasn't yeah. it? I didn't tell you about that. And then I put some coriander on to put a bit of green on because my rocket had sadly wilted. <laughs> and <laughs> wilted and died. Yeah, and some chives just to compensate. Although, you know us, we have chives on everything. Um, so yeah, that was our dinner and it was really, 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 really good. I'd totally recommend having some halloumi. I always recommend having something cheesy or creamy with your chilli just to take the heat off. But halloumi really, really, really works. And it's really low in lactose. Yes. So it's low power. Yes, exactly. But always check the packaging for that. Which is good for me. Yes. Oh, and here is what I made. Veggie paella, which I'll say straight off. This is our version of a paella that is not like a paella because people always go, this doesn't seem like a real paella. It's like, yeah, we don't make the traditional paella. So what? It's our version, isn't it? Yeah, I don't make it in a like a metre wide pan on the beach. I'm not, I'm not Spanish. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is really, really simple, isn't it? Yeah, it's really easy. So I measure out my paella rice, which I think was a mix of paella rice and risotto rice. Yeah, they're because pretty... Because I'd run out. See, Spanish people would just like, ah! <laughs> yeah, just forget you, you heard that. Um, and then I'm chopping up my veg and you'll see that I'm taking extra care to cook to cut it really thin Yep. because this is 30 minute meals not 45 minute meals Yeah. and the thinner you cut your veg the quicker you could go and do something else I can see you're cutting it very thinly yeah, here re as well <laughs> I sharpened the knives I'm, I'm quite scared about your fingers at this point yeah I'm not I'm my, not my nails was, uh, would be gone <laughs> I'm not the safest knife cutter um, so that, there's the stock again. Yep, so we use Same the Mazel 7 earlier. stock a lot. I never noticed it's got a Monash FODMAP yeah. logo on it, which is amazing. So you can buy that online. Um, we'll leave a link below for where you can buy it, I think, just because people always ask, don't they? Yeah, and this is my spice blend for the pilot. It's uh, paprika, I believe that's a bit of cayenne pepper. Yep. Um, a little pinch of saffron, only a pinch because it's really so expensive. So expensive. <laughs> but it makes it yellow, it makes the look good. Uh, and then a bit of salt and pepper. And I believe I added tons of freeze-dried chives. Freeze-dried? Because we hadn't got any fresh ones left at this oh, point in the I week. actually quite like freeze-dried chives. Look. Oh, that's a garlic-infused oil, yes. but it's got truffle as well. Was that because we'd run out of garlic oil? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to use our expensive but one. But the flavour in that is unreal. It was so good. It makes anything taste good, to be honest. We first had it like like uh, drizzled on a pizza. Yeah. And it was so um, So we had to buy some. So yeah... Fry up the courgette and the carrot, chop yep. thinly so it cooks quite quick. Yeah, the worst crime I can do for you when I make you dinner is give you uncooked veg. Yeah. Because it doesn't sit well with your stomach. Yeah, it's one of the worst things. So I always make sure it's really, really, really well cooked. So I kind of fry it as long as I can. Yeah. So for other people, if you don't have to have it so well cooked, this will take even less time. Yeah, just soften it up just, like five, you know. five minutes. I'll probably do it for like ten. Yeah. But... The rest of the meal doesn't take that long no, exactly. from this point. So I add in my spice mix, yep. make sure everything's coated, it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan, start burning. Tin of chopped tomatoes, in goes my stock, and my rice, the end. Done. That's it. And then I just let it reduce. That is really simple. It's, it's, very, it's very similar in a way to the veggie chilli, that you just sort of yeah. put everything together and let it reduce, and then it's not. Yep, and it's like... That's why this is a nice quick meal, because although it takes 30 minutes, for at least 20 of that, you're not even doing anything. No, so you can go off and get changed or watch some telly or do some work, whatever you want. This is the sort of food that I really like to have, because then you, you put it on, it doesn't look that great, you come back and it's done. Yep, exactly. I put in a few more uh, freeze-dried chives yep. for good measure. And then that's pretty much reduced now, you can see. And normally we'd have this, we'd put in like uh, chorizo in the past, prawns, chicken thighs, still tastes great. Yep. Without it. Yeah, honestly. definitely. I mean, I'm just... I'd have this all the time. I would as well. I was really, really impressed. And you're the one who's more d maintaining your meat-free streak. Yep. I'm not. No, but you... But I'm you, still happy to eat this. And you've been really enjoying it as well, haven't yeah. you? It's if, been nice. I haven't really had dinners, uh, any meat at dinner... At all. ...when we've eaten at home because we cook together. Yeah. I just have it when I'm out. Yep. Also... You saw some lemon being put on there. I find with the paella, lemon is so important. I love to squeeze a bit of lemon on at the end. Um, yeah. And it seems to bring it all together really, really well. So that is my tip. Although I think that's just standard, right? Um, yeah, but I, would, I wouldn't bother if you hadn't said that. Okay, so this is my cheesy veggie pasta bake. Um, it was supposed to be something that I was making for this video, but I 
got a massive IBS attack just before dinner. Um, shouldn't have really even eaten this because I felt so bad, but Mark kindly made it for me. So we shoved the camera on and he filmed it. Um, it's really, really simple to make. So I didn't really even have to tell him what to do. <laughs> yeah, well, I've made it maybe. It's kind of like making the gnocchi, isn't it? Yeah, very similar. So just chop up some courgette. You can see courgette's been a massive theme of this video. Probably isn't all our videos. I don't really notice. But we do eat a lot of courgette because it's that veg that really agrees with me. Which, you know, when you find it, you gravitate towards it. Yeah, I find that I can eat a lot of courgette without any problem, which is beautiful. Yeah. There is a FODMAP limit. Yeah, definitely. But it's not a small amount. No. And as you can see, we put our pasta on. This is a gluten-free brown rice pasta, which mm -hmm. is our favourite pasta at the moment. Um, lots of supermarkets do brown rice pasta. And it really, really is good. It holds its shape, doesn't get stuck together, doesn't break up. It just cooks like normal pasta. Yeah, it, it does feel like normal pasta. Yeah. So that courgette, as you can see, is being really, really well cooked. Um, you might have just seen there that there was some white sauce that come out the freezer. Yeah, from meal prep video. Yep. And then for the sauce for this, we just added some chopped tomatoes, some basil, um, and a few herbs and a bit of chili. Yep. So then just drain your pasta and then add it into your pasta sauce and then pour that into your dish, pour the white sauce over the top, put some mozzarella and some cheese and shove it in the oven and shove it in the oven Boom. until you want it to be done. Like until you think it's at that level, until you want to eat dinner really. Obviously, if you want to eat dinner in two days, take it out. But, you know, it, it is done pretty I much. I look for that, like, brown, slightly yeah, we, brown Yeah, we cheese. like it to go a bit crisp, and I love the bubbling around the edge. I want it to look like the top of a pizza. Yeah. So this is properly super cheesy. You could add whatever cheese you wanted. I mean, you don't even need to necessarily add the white sauce if you don't want. You could just add tons of cheese, whatever is easiest for you, yeah. I think. It's really, you know, up to you. Same with the veg. You can have whatever veg you want in it. Just whatever you've got in the cupboard. And of course, all the cheese is uh, low in lactose, yes. mozzarella, and some hard orangey cheddar. Yeah. Let, um, us know so low the, FODMAP. let us know in the comments if you want more details of low FODMAP cheeses and the lactose thing, because we can give you a bit more info on that if you don't know. So this is railway curry, Yep. which you might wonder what it is, but you also might wonder what all this other stuff is. <laughs> so we've got your gar low FODMAP garlic bread pizza. Yep. The rest of our smashed potatoes yep. that weren't frozen. And the railway curry. And my curry. railway curry, which is like a kind of, just a nice mild oh. spiced curry. I didn't know what to expect. I was quite worried and I it put, was good. I put sweet potato and spinach in it. Yes. So sweet potato, I find I can't eat large amounts of it. No. So I, I was originally going to put two sweet potatoes in this and I chose to just put one in. Yeah. And one between both of us is usually it, fine and it's a me. small it's a small sweet potato it might yeah. look you can't really tell the size can you there yeah um so that i think that was your truffle oil again that was the truffle oil the garlic and truffle oil so, so just, i was just kind of like trying to soften up a bit again because uncooked veg is our enemy yep with our stomachs so just making sure that it's extra well cooked probably it would have been fine anyway because I, I do so. give this time to reduce down oh there's my garlic bread These and my smashed potatoes are both leftovers that becky made for her blog yep we so, took pictures of them and we were like, you know, why waste them? So we froze the garlic pizza bread and these were made on that day. Yeah. So, so I just reheated them. So you've just added some flour and yeah, some curry. flour, curry leaves. Curry leaves, which is something I've never seen before until I found them in the supermarket. Chili, um, I think it's fennel, tamarind, ginger paste, a couple of other spices. I'll try and put the recipe in the description. Yep. Stock. And that is pretty much it. Put my leftovers in the oven. Boom. Oh, and a ton of spinach. Spinach. Give it a bit of green. And then you just let that reduce. And it, it's like, we always have, end up having the same curries. Ooh, what was that? That was yogurt. Ooh, a bit of yogurt. So we always end up having the same curries, but just, this is just a nice little variation yep. on having the same like korma, chicken tikka masala, korma. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, I've never had this before. No. I saw it on a menu at a restaurant in Brighton, Googled it, made it. The end. Boom. It was great. It was honestly the best. So they look exactly the same. They do look exactly the same. They're now hot. Yes. And the curry is reduced and that's it. That's the thing. We, we've been having curry a lot more without rice recently for some reason. We it's can eat. so we, good. Yeah, we can eat rice. I love rice with curry, but we've had all these extras. We've thought, why make some rice when we've got extras that are already done? Yep. Um, so the garlic bread worked really well. It was, I, it's, almost, it's a similar way to how I make my naan bread. So I guess it really works. Yeah, in that similar. sense. Um, and the smashed potatoes just work. I just think of them a bit like Bombay potatoes. Yes. They're not, but <laughs> it's it's my thing. The recipe for them is both the recipe of the garlic bread pizza and the smashed potatoes is on the blog. Yes, and I'd highly recommend them. Super, super quick to make. Um, 
and you'll just keep wanting to make them more and more. I can see a curry leaf in there. Don't eat the curry leaves. Yeah, pick them out. Pick them out. <laughs> They're not that nice. Oops. <laughs> but this is really, really good. I loved it. I'd eat it on a railway any day. Cute, cute. <laughs> so, if you want to watch us make even more meals, then click over here on the left. And if you'd like to see us do some grocery hauls or something of that sort, then click over on the right. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.